What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. If you're new to the channel, then nice to meet you. Today, we're going to work on making our player a little less overpowered. Up until now, the player could destroy enemies with fireballs, but the enemies couldn't do anything to fight back. So, to make things fair, we're going to go ahead and add in the classic platformer behavior where the player dies if coming into contact with an enemy. So let's get into it. We're going to start off by programming in what we want the player to do when he dies. So let's get into our player and the player script. Okay, in this area where we declare our variables, we're going to create a new one. We're going to say var is dead and we're going to start that off equal to false. Right? Our player is alive at the start of the game. Okay, and here we're going to say if is dead is equal to false whoops is equal to false then we want to be able to do everything in here all of so take everything that exists inside of the um, physics process if you follow along exactly as I've done it if you've done it by yourself you've changed some stuff it might be a little bit different but this is all the movement code Basically, anything you want your character to be able to do while he's alive. So we're going to indent that so that it becomes part of this if statement. So if is dead equals to false. So if the character is alive, I want to be able to do everything that I used to do before. So then what this does is if the character is dead, then we effectively disable all the player controls. If not... Even after the character died, you'd still be able to move and jump around the screen, which doesn't make too much sense. Next, we're going to go ahead and create a new function that specifies what to do when the player dies. For that, we're going to go ahead and create a new function. So over here under our, let's see, animation finish. What, why don't we put it right here? So we'll say func. And we'll just call this one dead. And then we'll say right, when we run this function, we're going to set is dead equal to true velocity equals. We're going to zero out our velocity. We're going to say. That we want our animated sprite dot play and we're going to want it to play a dead animation right, we're going to say clean shape 2d dot disabled equals true so with that we're going to disable our collision shape so that nothing else can or so that the dead body doesn't interact with the rest of the environment anymore and then we're also going to say timer dot start. Okay. So with that, we've created our function here. Now we don't have the dead animation yet and we don't have a timer yet. So let's go ahead and create those. First, we'll add in a timer for the player. So go back into this scene tree here. And on their player, we're going to just want to add a timer as a child. Okay, we're going to set our, well, process mode, we'll leave it at idle. Wait time can leave it at one, so that's one second. We're going to set it to be a one-shot timer. And we do not want it to auto start, right? We want to tell this timer when it should start. Then, for this timer to be any bit useful, we're going to go to this node over here. And then we're going to connect the timeout signal to the player. So when this timer times out, we're going to want to do something. So we'll just connect. Connect to the player, the kinematic body, connect. And then we have our new function here that we can put our code in. The code we're going to add in here is, first let's get rid of this pass. And then we're going to say get tree 
change scene, title, screen.tscn. So when this timer times out, it's going to take us back to the, or, well then what happens here is, right, when the player dies, then we run the timer, when the timer runs out, we're going to change back to the title screen because our character is dead and we can't play anymore. Now we need to go ahead and make our dead animation. So let's go back into our animated sprite. Get this inspector. Get into the sprite frames. We don't have a dead animation yet, so we're going to need to add one. Just call it dead. Let's see. And then we're going to add in our sprites. Today I'm just going to make the player blink or flash a little bit. So we have one sprite and one semi transparent or translucent sprite, right? The, the alpha is not 255 anymore. And then we're just going to set the FPS. We usually set it to 12. I'll set it to 24 this time. We're going to want it to loop between these, these two. So make sure loop is on. And then that will do it for our animated sprite that we need to add. Now we're done with the setup of what to do when the player dies. But we still have to figure out what we're going to do to actually trigger the player's dead function that we need to make the player die. For that, we're going to use the get slide count method that goes hand in hand with the move and slide method that we're currently using to move our player. So let's do a quick save on our scene and then let's jump back into our player script. So looking back into our physics process that we're in here, if we go all the way to the bottom of the code that we have and we're going to make a couple additions here, we're going to say if get if get slide count is greater than zero for i in range get slide count if enemy in get slide collision i dot collider name dead all right that was a lot of code there so let's go ahead and explain some of that so this get slide count what that does is it gets every after a move in slide function this counts the collisions that occur so collision that might occur with the ground the wall or a or an enemy so if that slide count is greater than zero then that means that something has been collided with so we use this for i in range. This is just a for loop. So what it does it for every collision, right? So get slide count zero, get slide count one, get slide count two. For every collision that has occurred, we're going to put the information for that collision inside of variable i. Then we're going to say if enemy or if the string enemy is in get slide collision i. So this is the collision index number so for the collision at this index number so let's just say that's collision one for collision one i want to know the collider what it collided with and then i want to know the name of that collider so it says right get what i collided with that's the collider if its name has the string enemy in it then I want to do my dead function. This, this way, if you do something like collide with a tile map or a wall or some platform, it shouldn't have enemy in the name, right? So then you're not going to go ahead and kill off your player. So only if enemy is the name of what you collided with, then we run our dead function. Now let's run the game and see what we've got. Okay, 
There we go. We we hit an enemy and we die. Oh, we can do that all over the place. Let's see which, which one was my jump key here. Jump on them. Takes us back to our title screen. That's great. Looks like everything is working. But we actually have a problem. For that, let's go ahead and show you that, that problem here. When I'm moving, I die. But if I just stand here... Right, that that's not supposed to happen, right? Anytime I touch the enemy, I should die. But if I'm not moving, then nothing happens. If I'm moving and I touch him, then I die. So, that's a problem. But what's more than a problem is understanding why it happens, right? I can tell you the solution, but we need to know why it's happening. Well, why that happens is because we're currently calling this dead function after we do a get slide count that pulls information from our move and slide function. This move and slide function only happens when we're actually moving. So if we're not moving, there's no possible way for us to get a slide count and get a collision. And for all this code, this, this will never occur. But what happens is the enemy is moving right now. So since the enemy is moving, he'll be using his move and slide function. So we can simply put this code or similar code into the enemy so that if we're standing still and the enemy hits us, then we die also. So let's go ahead and do that. Jump back into our, jump into our enemy and then go into our script here. So we'll go down after all the other code in the physics process. And then we'll try something like this. If get slide count is greater than zero for I in range get slide count if player right in the player script we were looking for the enemy now we're in the enemy script and we need to look for the player so if player in get slide collision i dot collider dot name then we're going to get slide collision i dot collider dot dead okay so these first three lines over here are exactly the same as what we have in here right it's just this last line that's different. So in the player script, if all of this happens, we bang into an enemy, then we run our dead function. For the enemy, if all of this happens and we bang into a player, then we use this get slide colli excuse me, get slide collision dot collider. This this is gonna return the object for our player. Once we have the object for a player, we can say dot dead to run the player's dead function. Right, so, yeah, again, almost all the same, but over here, the player runs its own dead function. In the enemy script, the enemy is basically telling the player to run its dead function. All right, so now that we have that, we should be able to run our game and everything should work. So cross your fingers. Okay, we run in here and we jump jump on these guys. That, that still works. It's always good to test to make sure that something previously working still does work after you modify your code. And then if we stand still and he hits us, we die. Great. So it works in any case. We can run into these guys. Everything else still works. We can shoot them. But now they have a little bit of strength to fight back. Okay, great. Today we went ahead and made our game a little bit more fair. We found that using kinematic bodies and collisions is not quite as straightforward as when we used Area 2Ds with our fireballs. So it was a little bit tough. It took a little more work. But because of that, we got to learn about the for loop, which is used quite often and will surely come in handy in the future. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you liked today's video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. As always, the sprites, source code, and everything else that I've used in this tutorial today is available on my Patreon page. 
So if you want to check that out and also support the channel, the link is in the description. And with that, we're going to call it a day. So thanks again to everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next one real soon. Take it easy. Thank <laughs> you.